Buttercreams are usually the frosting of choice for most cake decorators because they're super versatile and stable. But not everyone likes buttercreams. They can be dense or too sweet or overall just too rich and buttery. So today I'm gonna to show you three types of frostings that I like to use for my cakes that are not buttercreams. I recently created a video outlining eight types of classic buttercreams. These types of frostings use a high ratio of butter. So these are your American, Swiss meringue buttercreams, French, etc. The butter percentages in these frostings range from 30 to 52% with an average of 44% and the average sugar content was around 34%. And with butter comes some beautiful things like stability. It makes them excellent for piping and smoothing and long-term storage. But with the high butter content, it can also feel dense or taste well of of butter, and some of us prefer a less heavy topping for cakes. This includes most of my family, so I make many desserts with these, which I'll call non-buttercream frostings. So these don't have any butter. The fat is coming primarily from heavy cream or chocolate. And the fat content averages around 28%, and if you compare that to 44% from the buttercream, it's gonna feel a lot less dense. They're also less sweet with an average of 16% sugar. Stability-wise, these three do pipe and frost really well, but since they're made using heavy cream, it's it's best that they're used immediately and cake should be stored in the fridge after frosting. Okay, and I wanna start with my family's favorite one, which is yogurt whipped cream. Adding Greek yogurt to whipped cream creates a creamy yet fluffy topping with a slight acidity from the yogurt. It's an easy frosting that comes together in five minutes and it pipes great as you can see on this cupcake and it smooths really nicely on the outside of cakes as well. This frosting will be the least sweet of the three that I'll show you today with 12% sugar. And to give you an idea of the texture, it has around 23% fat. For this recipe, you'll need heavy cream, full fat Greek yogurt, powdered sugar, and vanilla. I'm starting here with a bowl and whisk attachments that I've placed in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Then I'll add the cold heavy cream, cold Greek yogurt, and vanilla. So keeping everything chilled is important with any whipped cream because it keeps the fat contained in the heavy cream solid. As it warms up, the fat liquefies and is not able to hold on to air as readily. And that's why whipped cream deflates in warm temperatures. And on medium speed, I'll whip up the cream, pouring in the sugar after mixing. And I found that it doesn't really matter when you add in the sugar. You can add it in the beginning if you like. Just keep whisking on medium high speed until it's thick and smooth like this. This frosting is great for filling and smoothing onto cakes. I've used it several times for berry chantilly cakes. It's pretty stable. And I think the concentrated amount of milk proteins contained in Greek yogurt gives the final whipped cream bulk and stabilizes it. Here I'm smoothing it onto a sheet cake that I've divided into three parts. So we can see these frostings side by side as far as their texture and color. And the reason I'm using a sheet cake today is because I'm testing measurements for the size of cake. I will be baking a couple of these for a party for my mom later this month. Also, if you're not into Greek yogurt, I have another video just on whipped creams with other ingredients that also stabilize. So definitely check that one out. Okay, the next one is a whipped cream cheese frosting. And it's easy to make, it comes together in 10 minutes. This one tastes like a light and fluffy cream cheese, but it's, it's not too heavy, but it is definitely for someone who loves cream cheese because that's all you're going to to taste. It's about 20% sugar and the 28% fat is coming from the cream cheese and whipped cream. This one pipes amazingly and gives you the smoothest finish when frosting on cakes. For this recipe, you will need full fat cream cheese, heavy cream, powdered sugar, and vanilla. First up, we're gonna smooth out the cold cream cheese in a large bowl. I use my hand mixer on low speed just till the block is broken up, then use a spatula to smear it all over the inside of the bowl to get rid of any lumps. This is an important step. We don't wanna use the mixer are too much on cream cheese because it will thin out, but smashing it manually like this is okay. The smoother you get it, the smoother your finished frosting will be. So go ahead and set that aside. And then in a cold bowl, I'm gonna whip up heavy cream with powdered sugar and vanilla. I'm just gonna whip this up on medium high speed until it reaches stiff peaks like this. Now grab the bowl of smushed cream cheese and we're gonna aerate it. But first we have to thin it out because it's way too thick for us to fold anything into it. So I take a couple scoops of the whipped cream cheese and then kind of smash it in by hand. And you can also make sure that all the lumps are gone during this step too, because again, the smoother you have it at this step, the smoother it is gonna be at the end. Now grab a scoop of the whipped cream and fold it in. Still gonna be a little bit difficult at this step. So what I like to do is these cutting motions to break up the cream cheese, then kind of gently fold in the whipped cream. And you're gonna just work your way through the whipped cream, increasing the amount as you finished with the largest amount of the end. And the folding is gonna get easier as you work through it. 
it. So this takes a little bit of arm muscle with all the folding, but I found that it's the only way to make a good whipped cream frosting. Like I said earlier, we wanna minimize using the hand mixer with cream cheese because it'll thin it out too much. So here's what the frosting looks like on a large cake. It's great for filling and smoothing because cream cheese naturally has stabilizers in it. So we're kind of working with them by keeping everything cold and not over mixing with the hand mixer. You can also see a color difference as well between the super white yogurt whipped cream and the cream colored whipped cream cheese. All right, the last frosting is a vanilla whipped ganache, which is a step up in difficulty at moderate and takes around 20 minutes plus cooling time. This one uses white chocolate, which gives it a creamy texture and I think it tastes like vanilla ice cream. It also uses a good amount of heavy cream, which helps give it more aeration and a light texture. The sweetness and the fat content are gonna vary based on the brand of chocolate you use, but it's usually gonna be around 15% for sweetness and 35% for fat. For this recipe, we'll need white chocolate, heavy cream, vanilla bean, or you can use vanilla extract and salt. Now an important note on the white chocolate, you have to use bar white chocolate, not chips, which sometimes use other fat sources such as palm oil. That's why brands can't use the word chocolate on their bags. You see how it says just white chips. Real white chocolate just uses cocoa butter as their fat source and that's what you wanna use. Okay, the first thing we have to do is chop up the white chocolate into small pieces. It doesn't have to be microscopic, but small like this allows everything to melt more evenly. So we put that all into a bowl and set that aside. Next to a small saucepan, go ahead and add the heavy cream, the vanilla bean seeds, and the pod if you're using it, and salt. If you're using vanilla extract, you're gonna add that later on in the process. When the heavy cream starts to release a bit of steam from the top, not boiling, because you don't wanna burn the milk proteins, that's the time you wanna pour it all into the bowl of the white chocolate and let that sit for a few minutes. Now give it a good whisk and make sure that everything's fully combined. There's no pieces of chocolate stuck on the bottom. You can add in the vanilla extract here if you're using it and cover the bowl and place this in the fridge for no less than four hours or up to overnight. Once it's done chilling, remove the cover. It'll still be liquid. It's not going to firm up, but it will be very cold. So I have a thermometer here. I'm just showing you that it's around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't have to take the temperature. I'm just showing you that it does have to be cold for it to whip up. Now we're going to whip it up on medium low to low speed. And we do this because it's really easy to over whip. And that point it It'll be grainy and it won't be smooth for your cake. So watch the texture as you whip it up. It goes from really liquidy to like a melted ice cream to a thick cake batter. And right when you get to the thick cake batter, borderline sour cream texture, stop the mixer. So assess the texture at this point. I like mine to be just a touch more stiff. So I'm gonna whisk mine manually until it reaches like frozen yogurt texture. And this is the texture that I like because I find that it sets just a little bit more after I frost and smooth it onto my cakes. So here's what it looks like next to the other two. It's definitely got a whiter color than the whipped cream cheese. It smooths beautifully. Like I said, it sets up a little bit more after you put it on the cake. I think it has to do with the cocoa butter contained in the white chocolate, and that kind of helps stabilize everything. And as far as how stable these frostings are for filling inside of cakes, this is a pretty large cake. It's about one inch of vanilla cake on the top and on the bottom. So it's pretty heavy and it held up really well. I'd really have no problem using any of these for fillings for a large layer cake so long as you don't go too thick and as long as you keep it refrigerated I don't like to keep these types of cakes out at room temperature for no more than two hours 